The Pixel Pump is a vacuum tool that allows you to assemble PCBs and it's meant to fill the gap between having tweezers and having an expensive automated pick and place machine. The Pixel Pump allows you to not only do single prototypes but small scale production until your project or your business or something goes to a point where you need more quantities as you can afford a professional pick and place machine. So it's meant for hobbyists and for small businesses that do a few prototypes for small scale production. You take your pixel pump out of the box. You have the accessories, which include a set of nozzles, which are suitable for most components. Like there's a very small one for 042 or even smaller components. And a large one that can also carry like MOSFETs and bigger ICs. You have your vacuum pen, which looks like this. It has a lure lock nozzle in front, which can hold your typical needle. So you just push them on here and you can easily swap them and they're secure and you have an airtight connection. There's also the silicone hose, which connects the pen to the pixel pump itself. And it comes with a user serviceable filter. So that is to prevent debris from entering the pixel pump and clogging up the valves and the pump. You connect the filter side to the pump and the other side to the pen. A great benefit of this hose is that it's super flexible. It will not get into the way. So it is heat resistant. If you touch it with a soldering iron, nothing's going to happen. The assembly of the pixel pump is complete. It has a magnet that holds the pen so you don't accidentally lose it or, or anything. So then let's connect it to power. There is a power supply coming with the pump, 12 volt power supply. As a last step, we will connect a foot pedal. That's also one of the benefits of the pixel pump. You can have the pen in one hand and your SMB magazines in the other hand, and you can trigger the pump with a foot pedal. This is the pump in the, in the initial state, and it is now ready to be used. The interface is pretty simple. You have two modes, lift and drop. Two power settings. Sometimes you have very small components. You can go to low mode. It's a bit, little bit quieter. Um, but those buttons also have hidden functionalities. Like if you long press on lift, you enter a brightness settings mode. If you now use the low button, you can make it dimmer, and the high button to make it brighter. And you can save and cancel. And you can also change the presets of low and high. Like if you long press on high, the pump starts running, and you can increase or decrease whatever you want to have as high, and you save that. So you can have your two custom presets. The pixel pump comes with a one foot pedal, which, which uh, triggers the pump by default, but the foot pedal has like two channels. You can have a second pedal daisy chained to the first one, so one is still triggering the pump, and the second one is advancing your software. It's compatible with the iBomb. This is the iBomb. Bomb is an open source project that generates this kind of HTML view of your board, so you can easily assemble. It highlights the current component, and if you press the second pedal, it'll jump to the next line and show the next component. So you always know which one has to go where on the board. And it's also compatible with Eisler's Smart Guide, and those keystrokes can be modified with the serial interface. So if you have a different tool here, you, or just an Excel sheet or something, you can make it send the down arrow, so you can use whatever tool you have you like. So here's the, the cool thing, right? You have your foot pedal to trigger the pump, and you have one hand to advance the magazine, and the other hand uh, free to place the boards. So I start with the 100 nanofarad component, I go here. Next one, the LEDs, those are quite a few. So now I know I have added to the silk screen the orientation of the LED, so I have it easier to hand pick and place. I see the orientation here from the tape, so I rotate the board as they come out of here, and that's the benefit. I now have to place like 12 LEDs, and they all come in the same direction. So I take the first one, put it here. Take the second one, put it here. And you notice I haven't swapped any nozzle. Look, this one is reoriented, so I put it on the desk, rotate it, and pick it back up. I haven't changed any nozzle because the one nozzle supports a variety of components. So, next component, which is the button that I have here. And I can also reuse the, component, the, the nozzle. And you can see all the components in tapes are optimized for vacuum picking. 
So this component, the button, I can just grab it by the button itself, by the, uh, by the little plastic tab, and place all the buttons. The last component is the connector that I have in the back here. And now I can try to reuse the nozzle, but it might be too small. It works. So this is a component, if I have to reorient it, I just dump it onto the table, take the nozzle, turn it as however I need it, and just pick it back up. So that's it. That's the board assembly. I had a box that was growing all the time uh, with more and more uh, component scripts and it just was a nightmare to find the components to see which one I already have, which one I do not. And with this system you just can see at a glance what you have and what not. For example, you have such a rail, right? And if you start a new project, um, you can easily see which components you already have and which ones you need to buy. Let's say 100 nanofarad 0603, so this is this one here, 100 nanofarads 0603. You take it and you put it onto the rail. And so you can assemble your rail as you need it for a particular project. And it's just a lot quicker than having like this individual strips and all that. I usually label the rail and I put all the components that I need for this particular project onto the rail and so you can put it onto the shelf and swap projects very easily. Another great advantage of the magazines is you can, you can use them single-handed, right? You just pull the strip here and it'll advance another set of components. And then you can pick a place and if you, if you have it uh, exposed too much, you just push it back and the spring-loaded lever in the front will make sure that it don't fall out. So you can put it back into the box and no component will fly loose here. So sometimes you have a project where you only need maybe 10 components. So you buy this amount of parts, maybe even, even less than that. And if you have only that many, you can simply take a fresh magazine, insert the strip, and just fill it up like this, right? And you have, and you have it ready. If you want to fill it all the way, you will not be able to push more than like three or four turns until it gets even harder, right? And that's where the magic tool comes in place. You just put it in like this far, you take the tool, insert it from the back, so it is able to grab, and then you just turn it up and wind it up until it's full, and that's it. Now you have a, a filled magazine. The entire pixel pump is open source. Uh, you can download the PCB files, you can download the step files for the enclosure, you can also download the software, and the thing is, the main board, which I have here, this is Besides all the necessary connectors, there are two expansion ports here. Expansion port 1 and expansion port 2. And you can connect your own accessories to it. The pixel pump backside here has unused screw holes on the inside, which you can attach your own PCB. And if you want to add Wi-Fi or solder paste disp dispensing functionality or whatever you like, you can use those two ports to talk to the microcontroller directly. Uh, I chose to go with MicroPython for the entire pixel pump because I think it's lowering the entry barrier for open source contributions and it also was a lot quicker for me to develop the software for the pixel pump. And the RP2040 has great MicroPython support. The cool thing about the Raspberry Pi um, bootloader is that software updates are as simple as dragging and dropping. There's no need for, to install any software on the desktop. You simply enter bootloader mode which you can do via the UI or via the reset button and then you have a USB stick uh, called RP2 and you just drop the new firmware file, it'll flash it, it'll restart and it's done. I hope you enjoy your pixel pump.